Hey Sagittarians, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be taking a look at your mid-March monthly reading here. So in your meditation, I immediately saw a scarab beetle and I saw the scarab beetle being kind of larger than life. And then it got inserted into like a, uh, a scarab beetle is like a, it represents the ace of pentacles mostly. <laughs> it's like a hybrid, but it's, it's Ace of Pentacles and the Lisa Robertson animal totem deck, which is how it appeared to me. So the scarab beetle was inserted into what felt like a lock and then it was turned into this like ornate gold and it was turned like it was unlocking a safe. And then I saw Isis, like the goddess Isis come through. It was very Egyptian. Um, and then I saw a black cat, which is associated with cats, um, come forward and sit down. And I felt like the message from this was there's an aspect of material abundance coming through and financial gains and reputation, but there's also an aspect of pay extra attention to deja vu, signs and symbols, and dreams. Because it feels like they could be a lot more prophetic and important than just like your subconscious kind of working through the day. Hmm, interesting. Let's see what the animal energy is. <laughs> it's an interesting place to start from. Let's do it. Oh, 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 one of my absolute favorites. So this is really, really good. So this is the deer, obviously. So the deer equates to the empress and the tarot, which is so perfect with Isis because she is a great mother energy. And then we have the deer, the empress, which is the great mother of the tarot. So I love how this is lining up already. You know, the deer is very much about compassion. It's about divine and fe divine feminine and divine masculine energy. It's very much about showing compassion for ourselves and for others, right? The tagline for this for me is always love is patient, love is kind. This is also about, because it does relate to the empress, it's about gestating something, believing in something before you see it, right? It's it's a being in a period of happy expectation. <sighs> which is really interesting as well. You know, I feel like with the scarab beetle, there's an aspect of that that is speaking to, because that's an aspect of like refurbishment or, or taking things that are for the recycling and then creating something amazing with it. It's kind of like that design challenge from Project Run Runway or from Drag Race, where they're like, here's a bunch of garbage, create something couture with it. <laughs> that's that scarab beetle energy. So I'm kind of obsessed that that's coming through. I feel like there's an energy around things that you were working on previously or took steps towards or introductions that were made that are going to be coming back around, but you're going to be signs, it's seeing signs that that indicate this before it actually comes uh, into fruition, but it feels really important. Now, interestingly enough, we're headed into the spring equinox on March 20th here in the Northern Hemisphere, and the uh, you know tarot energy for that day is the Empress. And the Empress coming up talking about this time period. It's also feeling very auspicious already, Sagittarius. I'm here for it. Very magical. When you have Isis coming through, good Lord. I mean, I can count on one time the number of times that's happened. It's really something. What's going on? I mean... So the hermits come up in the reverse. So the hermit in the upright, it's beautiful Virgo energy. It's about really going on a spiritual spiritual pilgrimage of sorts in order to glean wisdom and insights and clarity. Now this star in the lantern here is the star from the star key, the Aquarius card. So there's something really, um, it feels like very magical and very palpable. But here's the thing, he came up in reverse. So I feel like there's, remember when I said that there were things that were um, either given energy before or started before or steps taken around something before or something that precedes this time period, like the Empress that is, you know, in the pregnancy stage, the seed was planted, the gestation's happening, and then it's going to be birthed here. It's really interesting because I feel like I'm looking at the time like right pre-birth which is really interesting. Then we have the the hermit um, upside down. And I feel like this is saying like, it's a time where we're coming out of this place of, you know, having a lot of that introspection, a lot of those like questions and a lot of what I should do. Moving into a place of whatever I can't figure out on my own, I'm going to release, which is great. And just let it be what it'll be, right? Interestingly enough. 
What else is going on with Sagittarius? Oh, <laughs> three of wands, like from the winter into the spring. It's so good. Empress is the number three key in the Tarot. And we have the number three here, the three of wands. And this is why I'm so obsessed with this. So three of wands, let's talk about the two of wands first. The two of wands is about setting things into motion so that they can grow, right? It's about getting clear on what you desire, what you're moving towards. Remember, the wands are usually about the actions that we do or do not take related to the work that we love to do or our interpersonal relationships that really fuel our passions, right? So the three of wands is coming in here to say... I'm a step beyond the two of wands. This isn't just about like sowing the seeds or getting things going. This is where I'm in such a position of manifestation that my ships are literally coming in and there are people arriving in my atmosphere to help me get on board, offer me assistance, funding, inspiration, partnership whatever wisdom, whatever else it is. These are other people being alerted to your magnificence presence and wanting to get on board to be a part of it. Whew. It's amazing. It could even be something as simple as like, hey, like, I, I really believe in, you know, this idea. I really believe in what you could be or what you could do. And I'm going to help you out. You know what I mean? It's that kind of beautiful energy. It's really amazing. Or even, oh, are you setting the seeds around something and then people kind of coming forth and going like, yeah, we respond to that intention. Like, we heard the call and we're showing up now. So we have strength here in the third position, which is really beautiful. So this is Leo energy. You know, when we talked about the deer energy, and I said that the tagline for that animal energy is love is patient, love is kind. Very similar to strength energy because this is about love conquering hate and also making love-based choices over fear-based choices similar to the lover's key, right? So with this strength key here and like this lion and like this like like beautiful calm energy i feel like there's this sense of coming home to a place where we realize that the only thing that matters and that is constant is what we are here to give to the world and how we feel about what we're doing right it really feels like you're coming through or coming on the other side of a real time of adverse adversity or um, some trials or challenges. And it feels like you're kind of coming into this place where it's like you're going to be seeing some real signs and symbols that things are about to turn around and look up. And it's really beautiful. Speaking of which, the Hierophant, to clarify the Hermit in reverse, the Hierophant is everything being exactly as it's meant to be. It's Taurus energy, right? Which is really beautiful. <sighs> The fact that this is clarifying this like coming out of the cold and, and whatever we can't figure out, just letting go or like being done with this time of kind of uh, being in a place of solitude or, or being introverted or trying to figure things out and then kind of surrendering it all to a higher power, just letting fall away whatever is not in your highest and best good. That is what's going to clear the path for this three of wands. I feel like it's a release of control or attachment to how or when things come. Yeah. And that, that one thing is what gets the waters flowing again. <laughs> That's how it goes, isn't it? Wow. Okay, wands for wands. So we have the five of wands to clarify the three of wands. Now, five is the number of change, right? Five is also about, it's a bit of a struggle or competition or, you know, uh, some discord. Now, what's really interesting about this with the three of wands, because we're talking about people noticing what you're doing and wanting to be a part of it or coming to your aid. I, I'm hearing a funny saying of, um, I don't know if it's funny, like, ha ha, but like more money, more problems, or like, it's, it's that sense of like, when things really start rolling, you start to manifest not only positive things, but negative as well. But this is you being a manifestation magnet so I feel like there's an element of taking the good with the bad here but there's also a sense of you're being called to really step deeply in your into your discernment during this time during this gestation period and understand that not everything that comes to your door is for you and that discernment is a huge component of manifestation so discern wisely not every ship that comes in is, is yours to board right it feels really important. Please put a little pin in that. That feels incredibly important. And I feel like Isis is coming in to say as well, yeah, that's what I'm here for too, around the signs and symbols as well, right? Strength. 
Oh! Whoa. So, to clarify, can I hold all these up? Kind of. So, to clarify strength, we have the Ace of Swords in the reverse, and then the Nine of Wands in the upright. So, I'm just going to put this down for a second. So, the Nine of Wands is very much about perseverance and having success as a result of, you know, never giving up in hard work and faith, right? But it is a bit of fatigue. It is a bit of like, oh, like, like a bit ready for a vacation, a bit ready for things to calm down, right? And then we have the Ace of Swords in reverse. Now let's talk about this in the upright as it is illustrated in this particular deck. So Ace of Swords, do you see these question marks up here? It's like, oh, this Ace of Swords is very much about not knowing which direction to point this sword. And then we have Spirit here in the background going over here, over here, over here. This is a big aspect of, you know, being in the unknown and being a bit unsure about what to do with information or an idea or an opportunity. And what's interesting as well is that it's clarifying the strength key with the nine of wands. And I'm really drawn to the smoke here about the nine of wands as well. Smoke is very much about illusion with this tiger here, which represents the unknown, right? And so it's, it's an interesting aspect of walking forward in faith that you don't necessarily know how things, you don't need to know, just like the deer with the gestation and the empress energy. You don't need to know exactly how things are going to turn out in order for you to have faith that you're on your highest and best path right? To draw upon those, those reserves of strength, really show yourself that compassion with the dear energy that there's no such, I, I'm getting something very particular that I'm going to tell you about. I'm really I'm hearing to talk about it. So I got a reading, um, a mediumship reading in my favorite place on earth. It's called Lilydale. It's in upstate New York. It's a spiritualist community where a bunch of mediums live, right? And uh, during summer season, I went there one year. I try to go every year. Um, and I got a reading um, from a medium who said to me, like, some wise words that I I think about a lot in my mind. And it's coming up for you now with this Ace of Swords in reverse. There's no such thing as making a wrong choice. So you can release any fear around making the wrong choice or making the wrong move. Because even if a choice that you make doesn't work out the way that you wanted, it's not that you were wrong. It's that that was a lesson that you needed to learn to align you to the path that you were trying to align yourself with anyway. So sometimes we have to take what feels like a misstep, but instead of it actually being a misstep, it's actually a corrective step that, that aligns us with our path that we truly like from a higher perspective want to be on. So I feel like there's this medicine and this, this, you know, advice around releasing any fear of making a wrong choice or doing something wrong, taking on more than you can handle or messing up somehow. It's interesting with the scarab beetle as well, which is about, you know, taking things that are, you know, kind of recyclables and making something better from it. I feel like there's an aspect from the past here that feels like past pain or past disappointment where there's, it feels like a lack of trust in your own decision making ability or a lack of trust that you have the power and, and ability to, you know, make decisions that are in your highest and best good and that will work out for you. And I'm really hearing that you can release all that and, and have faith that, again, if you're holding on to anything from the past, any decisions that you kind of regret or look back on and go, God, why did I, who, why didn't I see that person for what they really were? Why did I stay in that so long? Why did I let that stay in that job so long? I was so miserable. Or why did I say no to that? Or whatever it is, I'm hearing to just kind of like take that for what it is as lessons learned, but don't let it affect your ability to choose from a place of high discernment now because you do you have that ability and I feel like the key here is through the deer with extending yourself the same compassion that you would want extended to you and in doing so soften and free yourself up enough to move forward and and make decisions from a place of divine knowing and inspiration and faith and confidence hmm let's go ahead and get an oracle Ooh. 
I'm feeling like the vintage. Let's do a vintage. Okay. Let's get an Oracle of Sagittarius. Oh no. Intuition. Does that not look like Isis' symbol right there? I'm so here for this. So first of all, I got to point out the fact that there's this like dove here. A dove is also a symbol for divine love and compassion. So I love that that's coming up again. What were we talking about with Isis and synchronistic dreams and, and visions and symbols? And then we have intuition coming here with this goddess. What is going on? You know, I'm really drawn to the fact that there's this bridge here, right? And there's this like entry. We're talking about mediumship readings as well. We get into it. I'm just so here for this. You know, this is about a threshold and a passage from one aspect of your life or reality into another. I feel like you, again, I keep getting it over and over with the three of wands and, and the empress. You are headed for an upturn cycle that feels like it's not just a long time coming. But it feels like it's something that is rather important in terms of your soul purpose and why you're here. So I just keep getting this very distinct feeling of all you need to do is look around you and stay connected with your intuition. That is all of the surety that you need. Uh, the decisions that you're going to have to make before you are of your highest and best good. Because when I feel confident about a decision from my gut that is better, that is worth more than asking a hundred people their opinion. And I feel like, you know, our intuition is our greatest ally, our greatest gift, our greatest tool, our greatest weapon in some cases. And I feel like for y'all, there's an aspect of that that says, if you are able to really hook into that and co-create with it and really like take it for what it is and really rely on it maybe even more heavily than you have before or more faithfully than you have before then the results in your life are going to reflect that faith spirit universe whatever is going isis is going to reward that faith by having things line up for you bigger and better than you could have imagined or hoped for i feel like it's a it's a level of faith or positivity that is going to be rewarded in a major way. And I feel like it directly relates to a portal or a transition point in your life where you're going from one place to another. Again, this could be work, interpersonal, life stages, whatever it is, but it's definitely related to you being in one place and ending up on the other side through like a transitional portal. I feel like for another group of you, this is going to result in a huge escalation of your intuition, which is always good, right? I'm so excited for you guys, Sagittarius. Such a spiritual, beautiful reading. I'm wishing you guys a most blessed and happy March, a very happy spring equinox to those of you in the Northern Hemisphere. And just thank you. Thank you guys so very much for being here. And as always, and most of all, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.